Let's talk about insulin really quickly. We have different kinds of insulin. We have rapid acting, short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. Today we're going to talk about short acting insulin. The name for this is regular insulin. Okay, so when we talk about regular insulin, we're talking about short acting insulin. Trade name is Humulin R or Novolin R. The indication is for hyperglycemia, of course, with diabetics that have type 1 or type 2, and it can also be given in diabetic ketoacidosis. What insulin does is that it stimulates the uptake of glucose into muscles and fat cells. Okay, so the best way to think of insulin is really as like a key. Without insulin, glucose cannot get into the cell. Without glucose in the cell, we can't carry out cellular metabolism. We can't create ATB. We can't create energy. So we need insulin to unlock the cell, open the door to let glucose get in. Insulin also inhibits the production of glucose in the liver and prevents the breakdown of fat and protein, thereby allowing us to use glucose for energy. Therapeutic class is anti-diabetic and hormone. Pharmacologic class is pancreatic. The way that regular insulin is given is given sub-Q. Okay, so it's given in the fatty tissue, uh, usually in, in the arm, uh, behind the arm, in the abdomen. Those are the normal places that we give insulin a lot of times. The three things we want to think about with each kind of insulin is its onset time, its peak time, and its duration time. So with onset, what we're referring to is when does it actually take effect? The peak time is when it, it hits its maximum effect. And the duration is, is after this time, it's then not going to really have an effect at all. It's done. So the onset time for regular insulin or for short acting insulin is 30 to 45 minutes. Peak time is 1.5 to two and a half hours and duration is four and a half to six hours. Now, this is why usually we're checking our patients' uh, blood sugars every four hours or so because the duration time is about four and a half to six hours. So we usually check it every every four hours or so in the hospital at, at a minimum. The onset time is something you really need to be careful with. You need to be looking at your patient. Okay, if you take your patient's blood sugar and you give them insulin, within 30 minutes to an hour, we're going to see their blood sugars come down. So we want to be really careful that their blood sugars don't drop too low in that time. We really want to monitor our patient's neurostatus, see if they start sweating or anything like that. Some things to keep in mind with uh, patients who are taking regular insulin is we want to assess for symptoms of hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. We really want to be monitoring our patient's blood sugars. We want to monitor their body weight. We want to monitor blood sugars every six hours, four to six hours, and monitor our A1C every three to six months. We've talked about... uh, hemoglobin A1C before, this is glycosylated hemoglobin. Basically what this tells us is it tells us an average blood sugar over three months. So even if we take our patient's blood sugar today and it's 100, if we look at our A1C and see that the A1C is 8 or 9, we would know that the patient has not been maintaining their blood sugars where they need to be and we need to either educate them more, um, adjust dosage, or really monitor them to make sure they understand how to take insulin and, and what types of foods and things are going to increase, increase blood sugars. Another thing that you want to keep in mind with insulin is that it can bring potassium into the cell. So in a patient who's hyperkalemic, one way to get potassium out of the bloodstream into the cell is insulin. It can actually open the door and it drags potassium in with it. The biggest word of caution I want to give you with blood sugars and insulin is that you, if you check a blood sugar and it's 200, you need to treat it then. Don't wait a couple hours and then treat it. Okay, suppose you took the blood sugar at 8 p.m. The patient just finished dinner at 7.30, so their blood sugars are high. You take the blood sugar at 8, it's 200. You don't get around to treating it until 10.30 without rechecking the blood sugar. Maybe their blood sugars already came down. And so you really have to be careful with when you take blood sugars and when you treat blood sugars. You need to treat it very quickly. And you need to really monitor in that first half hour to couple hours when they hit that peak time to make sure that they don't Uh, bottom out their blood sugar and become hypoglycemic. All right, so that is regular insulin. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at nrsng.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.